Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to Making Bullet Hill Games and Game Maker. So last time we added these scrolling level backgrounds and it actually looks almost kinda nice. This time, uh, there's a couple things, something that I forgot that I believe I said I was gonna do last time and, uh, and then didn't is... Let's see, a little bit more on the level backgrounds. I am going to go into the, like, the level settings where everything is generated here. And I also want to add a few things. Uh, one is going to be a scale. Um, uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of a, uh, a random scale to each of the objects that we, uh, that we have in the background. This should only take a minute. This can be random range between, like, 1.8 and 2.2, let's say. And that's just going to cause everything to be drawn at a slightly different size from each other. Now when I go back to the uh, to the draw code here, object.scale, object.scale, and negative object.scale is what we can draw this at. And this is going to uh, this is going to cause everything in in the level background to be of a slightly different size. Uh, you can see some trees are a little bigger than others, and I think I'm also going to give each tree like a say a 10 degree rotation around the x-axis so that uh, it's not completely top down but it shouldn't be uh and i think I, I think i might have rotated them the wrong way okay yeah it's being rotated the wrong way so i'm gonna want to like go negative negative 20 degrees negative 30 degrees or something like that and that's going to um all right that's too much wow really fiddling with values here aren't i I just want to be able to see slightly the front of the front of the objects. And in retrospect, I think maybe that looks a little bit weird, so maybe I won't do that. I don't know. I'm torn on this. Let me know in the comments if you think this looks stupid. I guess I'll leave it for now. Let me know in the comments if you think this, this looks stupid. So I don't want to spend any more time on this. Um, I'm going to just commit this. And I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to leave the fate of this up to democracy in the future. Um, let's see. So what I want to do today is actually... Um, I've been doing visual stuff a little bit in the last couple of videos, and I'd like to uh, I'd like to do more of that in the future. But I do want to um, have just a little bit a little bit more housekeeping uh, out of the way. That I I remember that I wanted to put this off until later for some reason, but I don't know why. It might have been I just wanted to put it off until like I actually had like persistent player data in the like the game menu separate from levels and stuff like that. Uh, score calculation, um, kill chain, show the kill chain in the UI. Uh, some of these things I want to get out of the way now because I don't want to, I don't want to leave them hanging and forget about them and then realize that I didn't do them like two weeks before I want to ship the game, uh, because that would be awkward. I also mentioned uh, collectibles, end of level rewards named after longtime patrons. I feel like, like putting putting people's names on the credit screen makes sense. I feel like putting people's names in gameplay things is something that like I should probably get permission for, and I didn't plan ahead for that, and I didn't like make a backup plan in case anybody said please don't do that. Um, so this is like a collectible idea. I might revisit in a in a future game if I like plan ahead for it. But today I think I'm just going to make like collectibles. I'm just going to give them names like the I don't know the trophy of. Bumblebees are the trophy of, like... I'm trying to think of an insect that I don't hate, like butterflies or whatever. And then, of course, there's displaying them in the menu. So I'd like to get all this done today. Um, this is going to tie in tie into score calculation and kill chain and all that. And I think the way it's going to work is that if you get a certain score at the end of every level, which is going to be TBA, I'm not going to hard code those into the game now. Um, I'll do that when I get to actually creating the levels and testing them and... and deciding what I think a good high score would be. Um, but I will set up the systems to do that today, right? Where are we? We are 8% through Sprint 3. I didn't check, I don't think the last couple of videos, I don't think I checked the uh, project dashboard as a whole. We're about halfway there. All right, this is what, week 20? A little more than halfway there? Okay. Uh, if I can get this done in 40 videos, I'll be happy. If I can, like, um, get it done in, like, 35, I'll be really happy, but I'm not going to 
not gonna hold my breath over that because things do go wrong and I do spend videos fixing bugs at the end. Okay, so firstly, score calculation. Um, have I any references to score in this game already? I do. Okay, so this is stored in the level. Uh, the level has a score multiplier and a score multiplier timer. Oh, did I implement that already? Why is that here? Hang on, have I been paying attention? Okay, wow, I already have that and I don't know why these cards are on this board then. Interesting. In that case, I, I died, apparently. But in that case, I'm, um... I do want to create, like, a persistent player data structure as well, because that that's going to tie back to this. I might track, like, cumulative score, because that's just a number that goes up that I think people have a, an affinity for, uh, for, for various reasons. Um, I might also track some, some other fun stats. Like, I don't know, all-time highest score multiplier or something like that, and then let that tie into an achievement system. Um, but in that case, let's move this over here, yes. Uh, let us move this over here. I, I don't know why this wasn't marked as finished already, but it's going to be marked as finished now. Um, player data. So the player in Bombardier, I was pretty happy with the way that the player save data worked. Um... These are just like an array of structs. Uh, I, I believe I said I was going to fill these in later. I'm going to do that now. So in, do I have like a group that's for things like system, system IO, system backend, that kind of thing? Not really. All right, I'll organize it later. Let's create script group player data. And um, player save data can be a constructor. And it's going to have a couple a couple attributes. Um, first, uh, we will instantiate one of these for each of the save slots. Uh, it's going to have a couple attributes. This is probably going to be entirely data. Maybe data with a, like a save and a load method, but it's going to be pretty much entirely data. Uh, we can have some things such as a high score. We can initialize that to zero. Um, I believe I established a self dot cumulative score, highest uh, highest kill multiplier, what did I call it, score multiplier, so we can say highest score multiplier is going to be equal to 1, and then we could like, we could display the, the persistent player save data on like their, uh, the menu screen inside the, uh, the game level selector, something like that. Uh, what might some uh, some other fun stats be? Um, self dot total kills, self dot total shots. Total damage dealt. Total damage taken. I like I like mostly pointless stats. I get enjoyment out of this. I assume other people do as well. And we could uh, we could tack on other other things. Uh, when the time comes like uh, i don't know if you want to keep track of like buffs given like total fire damage dealt or anything like that um i believe i uh like individual towers and bombardier kept track of this data but i don't believe the player kept track of like anything like this um i do want to have some kind of achievement system in this game um i mentioned that ending up on the cutting room floor for, cut the cutting room floor for bombardier uh oh you know what we're also going to need is like self dot um, total level cleared, and that's going to be, um, zero, and that's going to determine which levels we have access to. Uh, I may implement that today, I might implement that later. All right, so this, nothing changed, we just created a couple of structs with a couple of values initialized to mostly zeros. Uh, nothing changed here. Um, is there any, all right, there's a high score label. Oh, you know what? I'm going to want high scores for um, each of the levels in the game. Right, I'm going to make that a struct, and all right, we'll serialize that as a struct. Again, we're going to map the uh, we're going to map each each level in the game to a key in the struct, in somewhat the same way that we did over here, um, except it's going to be a. I think it's going to be like 
the string of the room name instead of the string of the room ID or something like that because it's going to need to persist between games. Okay, so we can start with that. We can um, initialize a player data struct. And uh, on that note, I suppose a good place to start would be if we go into the um, the initialization room and look at the uh, look at the UI. So the gameplay UI, which is going to be this thing. Um, which one is this? Uh, probably this one. Uh, that's the score multiplier. Uh, what is the high score? That's the game score. This is the high score. So the um, the get text is going to be something like. Uh, game controller dot what is it active player data or something like that active active save data um, and this is gonna have a property called high score which is going to be a map and we are going to again string uh, room name room get name uh, and this is gonna be just the current room. All right, and I will want this to initialize to zero. Um, current high score can be this value that we just established. And then uh, if current high score is not equal to undefined, uh, we can just Oops, uh, we can question mark, we can print the value of the current high score, else it's it's gonna be zero. Actually, it might be just like a couple a couple of dashes. There's like a no high score available sort of thing. Alright, so the high score is currently currently three dashes. Uh, that's gonna display it on the UI. I'm going to want on the U win screen. Um, show win screen and the level screen is going to be this. Uh, when you win, I'm going to want <clears throat> self dot active save data dot high scores. Um, I'm going to want room get name of the current room. Uh, the high score is going to be updated. And where is that? Uh, where is that actually going to be stored? That's the level data, right? Like the level data tracks what's going on currently, right? Yes, yeah, self level score, like that. Um, actually, current high score is that. Um, if current high score is equal to undefined. So if one hasn't been defined yet, or current high score is less than the level score, then then we can update the high score. And if you die, you won't get to keep your high score. Alright, that's the... Uh, it's the challenge. If you if you have a good score but you die, then it doesn't count. So I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and take this down without dying, because uh, when I when I pay attention to other things in the game and I try to play the game, I, I tend to die. All right, level clear. Um, we have ourselves a high score, and I realized if I had run into those bullets before they left the screen, would I have died anyway, or did I? Remember, remember to account for that earlier. I don't remember. Anyway, the um, yeah, the high score is that. If I were to play again, we would we would still have that value, and I can try and try and beat that. Uh, if I were to quit to the title and return, we're still gonna have that. It's not gonna be saved to a file. We don't have a save load system yet. Um, but I think that's enough for now. Okay, and also I will attempt to uh, keep track of the like highest multiplier. Um, uh, you know what? Level.score. This is like a decimal right now. 
I would really like it if this was either floored or rounded or something. All right, add score. I'm going to floor this value. So we're not we're not going to ever have a decimal. Let me do this again, and let me just. I don't see any reason why this should this should fail, but I've been. I've I've had code fail for dumb reasons before, so I, I would just like to test this because it's just going to take a minute. All right, I, I breezed through that one. My high score this time is 136, and my, my total score is no longer a, uh, a fraction. Okay, that's fine. Let's see, no more of that. Next, um, let's see, I will make this commit. We can say the high scores are tracked. Uh, I can also, where is the score multiplier set? By the time this video comes out, I expect that the uh, the next stable release of Game Maker will be out, and that should include Feather the Intelligence update. And if um, if that is the case, if you enable that, uh, there should be a uh, a Find References button, like F3 or something like that, um, and you can you can do the Find References, and you can find all the references to a symbol without having to search for it like this. Uh, I actually could turn that on now because I am on the beta right now, but I don't really feel like wrangling with Feather right now. Um, where is the score multiplier set? Plus equals score multiplier increase. Um, let's see. I think, do I want to, like, the high score only updates when you finish a level. Do I also want the score, the high score multiplier to only update when you finish a level? I, I feel like I will. Stomp count. That's right. That's what I called it instead of kill count because it's a little more, a little more childish and silly and cartoony. So we can keep track of self dot high score multiplier, and then um, again on the end of level screen we can preserve that. And that will also go for like the the, the stomp count. We'll update that on the end of level screen as well. I think all the stats will be updated uh, once you actually finish a level. So if you if you accrue stats and then die, it, um, it won't count. Uh, but this is going to be equal to the max of whatever the current value is and um, the uh, the existing high score multiplier. And if I were to go back to the the show win screen, um, we can say uh, player save data dot this is going to be equal to self dot level dot high score multiplier. I'm going to I'm going to make the, the language consistent there. Um, why did I create a breakpoint? All right, let's make the language consistent there. So this isn't shown on the UI anywhere. Again, it'll probably be shown in like the the records screen or whatever in in a menu somewhere. Uh, so just to test this, I will uh, make sure that it's it's just updating. Oh, you know, I'm also going to want this to be the max of the the max of the existing value. This is a very long line of code. So whichever is higher, the new the new score multiplier or the old one. All right, uh, this is 142 characters in a line. That's like almost two full lines of code. Uh, typically, 80 characters is what people like to like to cut off their lines at. But anyway, let me run the game again. Let's see why why are we like consistently showing the windscreen? Is this happening like 
Um, game maker. Is this happening like in the step event or something? It should only be happening once. 1.17 was the... Where is... Game maker? I don't understand. Okay, it is actually happening in like in the step event. Okay, well we can uh, we can prevent that from happening in the step event fairly easily first. We can have that score multiplier. Uh, we can. Is there a game state that's like? Okay, there there isn't a game state for like the end of level. Um, I believe I did that on purpose, but if we uh. So the end of level screen is uh that's that's just like yeah that's set to that's set to the empty string at room start. Um, so we'll only do that if uh, it's not already shown. I uh, should probably also do that with the lose screen, like when you lose. Okay, that, that's already only called once. That's already only called, like, um, when the player actually dies. All right. All right, so the, uh, yeah, that's only being called once. The exclamation mark only popped up once. At the, at the end of the same line, as it says, resizing window, because apparently Game Maker forgot to, like, Add a, add a new line after the end of that output message in the console again, but whatever. All right. Doing it repeatedly wouldn't, like, cause a problem or anything, but I feel better about the code just being correct and only showing the windscreen once. Uh, what, other, what other attributes are there that I want to save? Is, are we really, are we really doing this again? I don't know why, I don't know why that didn't save. All right, whatever. Uh, total kills, or uh, rather, total stomps, I think we've established that we're gonna call it. Um, cumulative score. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start doing these like not one by one. Uh, self.active save data dot cumulative score plus equals uh, self dot level dot score. Um, this is, all right, this is implemented, this is implemented, this is implemented. Total stomps, total shots, uh, total level cleared. I'm going to deal with total level cleared later. Uh, first, total stomps and total shots. That should be easy enough. Um, so save data dot total stomps plus equals uh, level dot stomp count, level dot stomp count. Like that. Uh, total shots. Uh, when the player shoots. And can I uh, can I make this workspace less like awful? When the player shoots. Um, we can say like game controller dot level dot stomp count. I might I might move all these into like a stats. A stats struct or something like that, but we could say shots equals zero. We could say self dot damage taken equals zero. Self dot damage dealt equals zero. Um, I think I'm done with the shader for the time being. Total shots, what was it? Shots. And when you take damage, um, game controller dot level dot damage taken plus equals bullet dot damage and um I'm already thinking these are like kind of kind of dumb stats, but 
Uh, in the foe class, there should be a on damage method. Gain controller dot level dot um, damage dealt plus equals bullet dot damage. Um, entity entity player uh, on damage is like an empty empty shell of a method up there. And okay, so none of the none of the enemies, um, none of the foe types override the on damage method. So there's a, there's a couple more stats we could update over here. Um, you know what? There we go. Uh, self dot active save data dot um, total shots. Like that. Um, total damage dealt and total damage taken. So that's just going to be a couple other numbers going up. Do I want to live on the edge and like not test these before I before I commit the changes and, and everything? I kind of do because these are literally just additions, and I think we've shown that the the other the other code in this section already works in very much the same way. All right, uh, I'm gonna run the game. If it doesn't crash, I'll I'll be satisfied with that. If I don't try to like just to make sure that I didn't like misspell any variable anywhere, or um, I'm gonna take some damage on purpose just to make sure that I don't didn't misspell a variable anywhere or didn't um, do anything else that was silly that would that would be an obvious cause for problems. All right, so the game didn't crash. Um, we have uh, we have next level. That's not really what we want right now. So I will put this. I will put all of these in a struct uh, because there there's getting to be a lot of these values, and I would like to start like organizing them. So instead, we can say self dot stats is going to be equal to a struct um, score can be initialized to zero. A uh, score multiplier can be initialized to one. Uh, I'm just gonna start. I'm just gonna like copy and paste all of these, and it's gonna need to be a colon instead of a semicolon, a comma instead of a a colon instead of an equals, and a comma instead of a semicolon. It's JSON, and all right. So now uh, let me let me search level dot score. Uh, find all instances of this and, and replace it with uh, level dot stats dot score and I can probably honestly um, just do a uh, a global search and replace. All right, let's do that. And the same for this. All right, I did search and replace for all of those, uh, all of the references to these values that are found elsewhere. I think I'm going to need to manually update references to all these in the, the level class itself, though, uh, because obviously we will be referencing our, our own self dot values here instead of um, like game controller dot level or whatever. Um, let's see. Hopefully, I can just use column select here because there is, those are all nice and neatly and lined up in a row. So many people over the years have told me, like, I see you doing that and I never knew that you could do column select. It's fun. It's like, more people definitely should know about, about being able to, to do this. Uh, for those who are uninitiated, hold down the Alt button, the Alt key on the keyboard, and, and click and drag, and you can select a rectangle. Makes uh, makes refactoring quite a lot easier a lot of the time. And I think that's all the references to those to those values. So I should be able to, uh, once again, I'll run the game and make sure nothing crashes. Make sure that I guess everything on the UI updates correctly. Uh, we already, right off the bat, have an error. Line 52.
self.stats.score multiplier. Why is that not score multiplier reduction? Oh, that's in a macro. Okay. Uh, one remaining macro reference. All right. Now we're going to now we're going to have it, it working correctly, right? Um I hate everything. Oh, I never I, I never added that value to the uh, to the struct. Okay. <sighs> Refactoring is hard. Probably the next time I sit down to do this, um, hopefully will be after Feather hits the stable version of Game Maker, and I will probably turn on Feather then for for IntelliSense help, and and see how that goes. I haven't been using it because it's like, I have I have tested it, I have uh, reported a number of bugs in it, but I, I'm not using it on videos because I don't want, oh, I'm on three health. I don't want like, to have unexpected things appearing as like an error in code when I'm making a video. Uh, that shouldn't be an error, that's just an error in Feather. But hopefully by the time it hits stable, we should be, uh, Should be safe. Anyway, uh, it looks like it looks like the game didn't crash. So all variables that are referenced are referencing the correct variables. If I go back in here, we have our high score being stored. Okay. Refactoring. It's a uh, trial by fire sometimes. Um, to be honest, I don't know why I didn't make that just a, a struct in the first place, so that we can like copy our values back into the into the player save data uh, at the appropriate time, but we got there in the end. So, um, did not do collectibles. I've been recording for 40 minutes. Maybe I wanna, I wanna save this for, for later. I should probably think through exactly what I'm gonna do with that before like I do anything else. Maybe when it, I have achievements in, in this list somewhere, right? Maybe when I deal with achievements, I'll, do those. You know what I could do, honestly, is I could, like, just take care of saving and loading, like, right here and right now. Oh, the, uh, the player save data also doesn't track which levels you've cleared yet. Maybe I'll do that next time. Alright, let's do save and load next time. I right, we'll also want to delete save data button. Yeah. Uh, that should be that should be pretty easy uh, to delete our save data. All we'll have to do is literally like reassign uh, whatever slot we're into uh, like a new player save data. Um, all right, we'll do that next time. For now, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Uh, this has been uh, week twenty. The big two zero, as one of my friends enjoys saying. Uh, if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Uh, look for the zero point two one release. Uh, the week 20, the 0 0.20 release, rather, week 20. Um, that will be, uh, that will be a tag that I'm making right now. I try to make about two game dev videos a week. Uh, one, let's make a game like this, and one tutorial tutorial. So if you're interested in any of anything like this or any of the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for links to that in all the usual places. You could see some fun things like your name in the credits at the end of every video. About once a month I post a preview of my future plans, and if you wanted to pledge I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I hope you all found this interesting. Uh, here is the current progress for Sprint 3, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, Kiexi, Posho, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Then Nothing Happened, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.